All right, we're on page 36 of Unit 5, uh, talking about element names and symbols. Um, as a process technician, you will need to know the names and symbols for a few common elements, um, like those listed in the table. Please note some things here. Um, notice every symbol here has either one or two letters. Regardless of whether it has one or two letters, the first letter is always capital. Always capital. If it has more than one letter, the second letter is always written lowercase. Okay. Now, if we look at a periodic table, hold on a second, I'll go get one. All right, I'm trying to resize this so it fits into my little casting screen. There we go, that works. Okay, ignore the thing about Olive Garden. Never ending pasta bowl. Is that really going on again? Might need to check that out. Anyway. always makes me mad that the first bowl is really big and the others are never not. But anyway, um, on page 36, uh, we're talking about elements and symbols. Uh, you will notice down here towards the bottom, I'm going to highlight uh, 115, 117, 118, these, um, and 113. These are given placeholder names. Now, placeholder names are the only place you'll ever see three letters representing the name of an element. And I wanted to point those out really quick because what those stand for is basically the number of the element. Either one, these elements haven't been discovered yet, or created in a lab, rather. Or more probably more so, they haven't um, had their names like approved just yet. I'm really curious to see when 118 is created. Um, I seriously doubt it stays around for a long time, but it will complete the set of um, noble gases. And so it'll be really curious to see what they name that element plus um, what they do with it, because it's kind of interesting there. Um, but anyway, um, you notice this un un octium. It's 118. Un un septium. Septium is the seventh number, so that's that. Un un pentium. Pentagon has five sides. Pentium is five. And un un trium, of course, we know triangles and tricycles have, all mean three, so three. Uh, Copernicum, obviously named after Copernicus. Rorontigium, ro lenium, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, and normally the ones with after the, in the hundreds and stuff, you're, you're, we're not going to deal with them. Um, they are more of the realm of physics. They're not, and most of these have a half-life. They're, they're so radioactive that they don't stay around very long, and any sizable amount of them is just not created for any um, useful amount. Uh, but I did want to point out if we have three letters. But you'll notice every one of these either has one letter, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or if they have more than one letter, chlorine, neon, helium, argon, krypton, bromine, the first letter's capital, the second letter's not capital. And I point that out because my students often have difficulties with it in high school, and I don't feel like anybody ever really states that little unknown fact. Your book actually does a good job putting that in there. And I've talked about three minutes about capitalization, so let's um, get to this. You need to know these symbols. Um, that is pretty much straightforward it. You need to probably make yourself some little flashcards, and you need to memorize these things. You need to know them. Um, there's not much I can do for you. I'll probably make a matching question with them, uh, which is kind of crazy, but you do need to know these symbols. You need to know their names. Uh, now, there's a few interesting ones here that I'd like to point out. Uh, you'll notice that carbon is a capital C. Calcium is CA. Chlorine is CL. So be careful of your Cs. Okay. Um, Hydrogen is H. We really don't have anything that combines with that. But hydrogen is a common element, very common element, so it's very important. Oxygen is just O. Again, very common element, very important. Nitrogen is N. Sodium is Na. Notice that. Now, sodium sounds weird because it's from the Latin natrium, and that's why it's got the symbol Na and not S. S actually belongs to sulfur. So that right there is really good material to trip you up. Sulfur is S. Sodium is Na. Phosphorus is P, not potassium. Potassium is K, from the Latin calium. Magnesium is Mg, and iron is Fe. And that's, again, from the Latin root ferrum. Ferrum, calium, and sodium. So you have three here that, if I were brand new to this, and I don't know if you are brand new or not to this, but I've got three right here. Iron, 
potassium, or potassium, as my chemistry teacher said it, and sodium, uh, these three all have symbols that are different from the names of their elements. So those I would pay a lot of attention to because of that. Um, ideally, the other thing I would point out is that um, you have C, A, C, L, and C. They all start with C's, carbon, calcium, chlorine. And then uh, I, I would say these two are grouped together and these two are grouped together because sulfur and sodium both start with S, but the only one that has an S symbol is sul um, sulfur. Same thing with potassium and phosphorus. The only one that does is P. Okay? And ironically, <laughs> phosphorus was discovered by a guy named Hennig Brand, um, and he called it Icy Noctiluca, which I think is a beautiful name. It means cold nightlight. Uh, but he found phosphorus by actually taking his own urine and distilling it because he was trying to find gold. And he believed that the human body was a microcosm of the universe and that we basically just could distill gold. And that was why our pee was gold colored. And um, I mean, it was a thought. It was an idea. And by constantly, you know, so first off, you boil off all the water of your urine and you just keep breaking it down to its components. He actually got this white this stuff that uh, this white stuff that would um, burn in air, and he came up with phosphorus, and uh, this is how we end up with matches. Matches are called phosphorus on a stick. A lot of really interesting chemistry there that I personally find fascinating. Sometimes my students look at me like I'm crazy, but um, I think it's fascinating stuff. Um, and it's a really great story. You can go look it up. If you go look on YouTube for Chemistry, A Volatile History, and look for part one of that, it's a BBC broadcast series. They actually talk about Hennig Brand in that. Um, it's just, it's an, it's an interesting story. It's a really fascinating story. And, and phosphorus looks really cool when it's burning because it's, it's a really bright white light. And it looks like it should be hot as Hades, and it's not. They can actually almost hold it in their bare hands within the container. And that's why he called it cold night light. I see not the Luca. On page 38, um, you need to go through and solve these uh, questions. Um, so how many elements on this list do you recognize? Okay. And where do you find each of these? Carbon. Carbon is found in charcoal. Carbon's also found in all organic compounds like gasoline and propane and so forth, and people. You can also find carbon, if any of y'all are wearing a diamond engagement ring, that's going to have some carbon in it. Um, diamond is pure carbon. If you write with a number two pencil, uh, or you've got a, pe a mechanical pencil that's got what you call lead, it's not lead, it's graphite, and that is pure carbon as well. Okay, it's really hard to believe that that the same stuff that makes a number two pencil right is the same stuff that is in a diamond. They're made up of the same basic element. It's just the structure is different. Very, very different structure between graphite and diamond. Hydrogen's found in the air, um, but not in any great quantities. Hydrogen's very lightweight. Um, it's usually combined with other stuff. For example, hydrogen peroxide, etc. Oxygen, of course, is found in the air. It's a, product, it's a product of photosynthesis. Nitrogen is found in the air and in uh, combined form with uh, fertilizers as well. Calcium is combined form in milk, bones, and antacid tablets. <laughs> they like to mention antacid tablets of all things. Coral, um, th uh, chalk, all that has calcium. Chlorine, uh, used in combined combined form for sanitizing drinking water. It's also used in swimming pools. Uh, so you're always going to find some chlorine. Iron, uh, we mine it out of the ground. It's a common metal. It's an alloy. It's used. It's part used in steel. Uh, we use iron in all sorts of places. Magnesium is combined form in antacids. Uh, milk of magnesia. Anybody? Um, as an alloy and fancy wheels on cars, as well as flares. Uh, police flares are magnesium flares. Magnesium burns very, very brightly. Uh, potassium is found in combined form in fruits and other foods. We know, of course, that bananas are a good source of potassium. You hear everybody say if you get a charley horse, you know, where I think that's what it's called, where your leg, your calf muscle is cramping, hurts like the dickens, usually happens middle of the night, wakes you up. Eat a banana is what most people will tell you. Uh, you can also go drink some um, pickle juice as well. Uh, drink pickle juice for that as well. And um, I think some of my students told me they heard eat mustard helps with that too. Not 100% sure about that one. Uh, phosphorus, 
P is used in flares and fireworks. Also found in matches. I'm surprised they don't mention matches. Sulfur. Sulfur is the is hydrogen sulfide. It's the compound that makes rotten eggs smell bad. When you're driving down the road and somebody has hit a skunk, and you'll know it because you'll smell it, you're smelling that sulfur. Uh, for whatever reason it is, God made us very, very, very sensitive to sulfur. We smell a little bit of sulfur and our 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 smell system's going to overdrive. Um, you know, some people use it as remedies for people, um, antifungal remedies for people and plants. It's also used in pure form to help acidify the soil. Um, I was thinking of something else with sulfur and I've lost it now. Uh, but you know, we're, um, it's also added, we add a little bit of hydrogen sulfide to natural gas. Uh, natural gas naturally has no smell or um, has no odor and we can't detect if natural gas is leaking so we add a little bit of hydrogen sulfide to it so when it leaks we can tell and then sodium is used in table salt okay um, on page 39 um, it says have you seen any of these elements in pure form you've seen carbon in pure form you've seen oxygen I mean just look around you you can't see it but you see it um, hydrogen nitrogen um, in pure form. You probably haven't seen chlorine in its pure form. It's, uh, it's a greenish gas. It's very deadly. Probably haven't seen sodium or potassium in their pure form. Uh, they're uh, metal. Um, it said, number four, which symbols do not begin with letters that are the same letter as the first letter of the element's name? And we already talked about those, iron, potassium, and sodium. So do take care of those. Five, which element in the list do you think is the most dense? You said iron. You're probably right. Iron and calcium would also would be the two densest metals on here. Okay, metals tend to be very dense, and they both happen to be metals. Number six, which is the least dense? Normally, your gases like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, those are going to be your least dense elements on this particular list. And number seven, which would boil at the lowest temperatures? I'm giving you an adequate pause here. Remember, boil means turn from liquid to gas. All right. The last question is pretty much just like the previous question. They're asking basically which ones are gases. Uh, so we're going to go back to our gases, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. They're going to boil the easiest because they're a gas. They're going to boil at the lowest temperatures.